Hi, in this instruction film I would like to show you how to use this machine, a Secotome 10 precision cutting machine. Uh, with this machine you can cut uh, with very high precision, uh, you can get very very nice surfaces uh, and I will show you how to use it uh, with different clamping tools. But for a start I would like to show you the cutting wheels that we have. I take them down from the wall here. What we have in stock normally is this one, a small uh, wheel for uh, soft non-ferrous materials, titanium and titanium alloys for instance. And all these wheels here have, are very thin, they have very uh, small particles here. So the, the surface uh, you get when you cut is very, very fine. Uh, meaning also that the deformation layer underneath the cut is, is uh, very uh, small. So, small one here for precision, soft non-ferrous. And then we have uh, another one here. By the way, you can see the code there, 30A20. It's for soft to medium ferrous materials. And the third one that we have here is this one, 50A20, which is for hard ferrous materials. This is what we normally have in stock, but there are of course many, many other uh, cutting wheels uh, to use with this machine. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have a two or three diamond cutting wheels, mainly for very hard materials such as ceramics. Uh, but you can ask me if you need to borrow them and I will also show you how to use them. I'd like to show you a couple of the clamping uh, tools that we have for this uh, cutting machine and we keep them down here in these drawers. I'm going to take them out on the table so you can see them better. Some tools that we need to uh, fasten the wheel with. One type of clamping tool and I will talk more about it later on. Now I change drawer. And down here in the bottom drawer we have some heavier tools. This one for instance. And finally this one here. With this one, the precision holder, you can feed the sample one, with 1,000 millimeter increments. And for that one, we have a number of different tools. This one here, which you can hold well, uh, regularly shaped samples, rectangular samples for instance. We have these ones, and you, maybe you can guess how you can use them. If you have a circular sample, you can use that one. We have even more here. And this one might come in handy if you have a rod or something that you would like to just cut a small slice from. In that case, you can use a special wax on this one. You put it on a heat plate, put wax on it, and then put the sample on, and then cool it down, and it will work perfectly. And it goes together with this one, the precision tool there. But I will show you an example later on. For the first cut, I would like to show you this clamping tool, and at the same time introduce you to the machine functions and the cutting cutting wheels. So first I show you how to put this tool in here. You have grooves here which this foot here will fit into. Might be a little bit tricky to, to make it fit but it, it's possible usually.
And this one here is also needed if you want to hold the sample and these two feet should also fit into the grooves like that. Might be a little bit tricky to get them in. So, uh, when you tighten this one here, I will need to pick out the tool soon, it's, it's uh, important that it gets uh, tight and perpendicular to the cutting wheel. The cutting wheel will come in here later on. To make that happen, it's much better if, if you fasten this one first and then use this one so you get it aligned like that. So now I will take a tool and start with, with that one. Some tools. And first I will tighten this one, as I said. You don't have to tighten it very, very hard. It, it stays pretty good there anyway. And then, depending on the size of the sample, I have just that one today. You have to decide where to put this one. If it's a big sample, you give a big distance here. Smaller one, you make it smaller. Hope that will be work. Yes. And then I tighten these two screws. It's usually a lot better to tighten this, uh, put this clamping device, this vise in before you put the cutting wheel in here because it's very easy to break otherwise. So that's the reason why I do it. And the sample will go in there and it will be difficult for you to see so maybe later on we put the camera in from that direction. This sample I guess is a medium hard ferrous material. I'm not really really sure but I guess it is. So I pick out the cutting wheel for that which I have back here. It's a Struess cutting wheel 3820 and it is for medium hard ferrous materials. It's here. And this flange here suits this size of, of, of hole for the cutting wheel. But uh, the machine also works with cutting wheels that have a much, much smaller hole. What you have to do then is remove this one. And in here, so with this ring removed, but uh, put in a safe place, you can put the flange back, and then it fits for smaller wheels. But for this size of the wheel with 22 millimeter holes, you need the ring back. So the cutting wheel comes there, a washer, and this screw. You need to tighten it a little bit more, for that you uh, need these things. This bar fits into a hole on the shaft. The shaft goes here behind. And this is so you can hold the shaft when you use this tool to tighten the screw there. And you don't need a lot of force there. Just a little is enough. Like that. And now it's time to put the sample in. So, to cut this, two, uh, this small uh, piece of material, 
I put it in here. I have of course planned where I want to cut the sample in advance and I think that is pretty good so I make a preliminary tightening of the sample by pushing this one in here and then use this lever to tighten the sample. Now it should be firm there pretty much, maybe a little bit more. So, uh, if I want to check if, if the position is, is okay in that direction, I can move the table forward towards the wheel and check it out. And to move the table forward, I use this thing here. Slower, of course, when I get close to the sample. And it looks more or less perfect. It also, it's also good to start as close as possible to the sample. Otherwise, it will just move uh, in empty space here without cutting. So I move it maybe a little bit more, maybe a little bit more close into the sample. And you can check so it doesn't touch before you start there. So I think uh, the positioning of the sample is good now. Uh, the cutting wheel is there, I put it there. Uh, I need some water cooling and I have these two here. I can also try before I start if the water cooling works by pushing a button on the panel. It's that one. I just put it on briefly and I can see and hear water coming. So it works, the water cooling works. So now I cl close the hood. like that and start to make some settings on the machine. So now we will look at this panel here. On the display you can, you can see three different settings on, on, on the machine. It's wheel speed, feed speed and cut length. So starting with wheel speed uh, we need to know how fast the wheel uh, should rotate. The maximum for this machine is 3000 per minute and it's set at 2200 reps per minute now and uh, uh, you can see underneath this hood here if you don't remember it uh, what the maximum uh, or the recommended speed is for these uh, cutoff wheels the wheel I put in is a 200 millimeter wheel and for that the recommended speed is 2200 if you have smaller wheel it's a uh, higher recommended speed. So, but 2200 is good. If I would need to change the speed anyway, I will not do it. I have these uh, arrows here. If I go to the wheel speed and then push enter, it changed a little bit, so I can now change the wheel speed with the arrows go up and I lie to you 3000 is not the maximum it's even more is possible but I will go to 2200 as was the recommended wheel speed when I've done that I confirm it with this enter button and I go down to feed speed which is the next one using the down arrow and it says 0.03 millimeter per second, uh, which is fairly slow and I recommend you to start slow and increase the speed step by step if possible. But slower cut, better surface, better cut. But a little bit faster we can go, so enter to make it accessible. And then we go up to 0.05 millimeter per second. It might look very slow, but the, when the machine cuts uh, and you, you get your sample cut, uh, that will not be a problem at all. And then after that you can finally go down to cut length and set how far the table should move uh, before it stops uh, and the cutting stops. 
Uh, now it's set at 70 millimeter, which is much, much more than the width of my sample. So again, enter to access the setting. And here you have a few different ways to set this. If you go down to zero, it says, instead of zero, it says auto. It means that when the machine feels that the load decrease, it will stop automatically. Try that if you like. I will, in this case, try to use uh, uh, exact setting. I set 25 millimeters like that. Confirm with enter. So if everything is correct, if the cutting wheel here is chosen and, and the right one, the sample uh, is clamped firmly, the settings for the cut is good and we also check that the water cooling wor works. It's only one thing left and it's to pl press the green button here, which I will do now. And the cutting starts and it will take some time. Mm. It has not yet come into contact with the sample, so if, if you listen... So during the cut, you can see uh, the feed here, it's at 20, 21 millimeter now and I set it at 25 if you remember. So it's going down and it will stop when it gets down to zero. What you also can see is the load bar here. It's uh, uh, very, very low. There is a limit there for 100%. The machine has an automatic feature which will shut it up off if the load is too high, but this is very, very low and it should be very low all the time if it cuts properly. If it starts to increase during the cut, something is wrong. Maybe you feed too fast, maybe you have the wrong cutting wheel or something else. So it should, re it should be low, below 50% always. Uh, uh, but this is extremely low and I will now show you how to change the uh, feed speed during the cut. So I move down with the arrows to the feed, feed speed. I press enter to get it accessible. And when it's accessible, I use the up button and I go up to 0.08 millimeter. And when I push enter, the new feed speed will be active. And you, maybe you could hear there that the noise changed a little bit. And you can see that on the load bar that the load is a little bit higher. So now it's at 16 millimeter and we will have a few more minutes uh, until this cut is finished. And now the cut is finished. So I open the hood. And you can see the sample is there and if I touch it, it's loose. So just pick it out. And we can have a look at the surface there. And it's a very, very nice, smooth surface. Uh, one advantage with, with this is that, that you can cut very, very thin samples. And all, another advantage is that the deformation underneath the cut is very, very small. So for precision cutting, for, for samples where you need small deformation, this is a very good machine. So now I will demonstrate uh, a few other sample holders. So to demonstrate the next sample holder, uh, I have to remove this one. You can be a little bit careful when you if you still have the cutting wheel there when you remove it. And for the demonstration of the next sample holder, I will use the same specimen again. So this is the sample holder that I will use. It's a 
a little bit different, but a very practical one, uh, especially if you have a sheet material that you would like to clamp directly towards the table here. But it will work also for my standard and demonstration sample here. To use this sample holder, you will need another of these small feet and you put it in like that. You can actually put it in before. And then you take the sample holder like that, the vise, put it in there. And with, I hope it's this tool. So maybe you can see that. You can tighten it like that. But you don't need to tighten it very hard because later on when this press down towards the table, it will force this one up and it will hold the vise firmly on the table. So you use this one here, take the sample and again you try to put the sample so you get the cut where you have planned to make the cut and then you will need this to get that one down, pressing on the sample. When you tighten here, it holds the sample down and it also pulls the vise up so it stays firmly there. So it's very easy. If you have a bigger sample, it might be necessary to put it into the next groove or so. Uh, but otherwise, it's very, very practical uh, vice to use to, to fasten samples, very quick also. So now I will demonstrate the third and last sample holder or vise for, for fastening the sample when you cut in this machine and it's this one here which we call the, the precision vise. Uh, it's possible to feed this in very small increments but I will show you later on. So now I will demonstrate this precision vise together with one of the possibility, uh, possible sample holders here. Uh, I will start with putting this one into the machine first and then I will put the sample holder in, the sample holder which I will use for this standard uh, demonstration sample that I have here. So now I start to put the precision vise in. This one also has these uh, special feet uh, here. They are a little bit um, cut a little bit different and that is to make it easier to, to put them uh, onto the table. Uh, you have two guiding pins also here and uh, actually the very very best position is to put it in the uh, position most to the uh, to the right here. So I will do try to do that now. Looks like that. Tighten this screws and there is one, one back here also. So now it sticks there. The cable comes around like that. And this connector, which is necessary to, to make this uh, precision vise uh, possible to use with, with um, exact digital settings, it needs to go into the connector there. Uh, it's much easier to put it in if we remove the cooling water hose for a while. So this connector here should fit into the machine connector there. 
uh, which has a, uh, it has a protective cap there uh, to avoid that water comes in when the precision vise is not used. So I remove that one. Look at the guiding pin there and the guiding groove there. Try to align it. And tighten it with this nut there. So, and I can easily check on the display over here that I now have a fourth line on the display which has, says X position and 0, 0.0 millimeter here. If I move the, the sample holder part on the precision wise, I can also see that it changes there. Okay? Good. Put the water cooling back. Like that. And now it's time to put the sample holder in to the precision wise. See this part here? It fits there. slides in and on the precision wise there is one screw on one side and there are two on the other side. It's much easier to use the side with only one screw when you fasten the sample holder. Like that. And our sample is there. So we put that in and I rotate the sample holder so I can tighten these two screws. like that. Now it's time to move the, the table and the precision wise that's fixed onto it closer to the cutting wheel using this knob for manual movement there. A little bit, I stop a little bit before the cutting wheel. And now I need to move the sample out because I'd like to cut a thin slice. So I use the knob on the back here, black one. There is actually one drawback with this uh, precision wise and it is that it is a little bit limited uh, when you want to cut. If I move it one step further to the left, uh, the sample holder almost touched the wheel. So it's not possible to cut very much there with this particular sample holder. Uh, and if I have it where I have it right now, I have to, to feed uh, the sample holder quite far out. But uh, it works, but it's a little bit limited. So if I want to make a small, maybe very thin sample, I always need to cut away a little bit in advance to have it uh, uh, make the first cut perpendicular to the cutting wheel there. So I move a little bit closer. And feed a little bit more. So I have some extra material there. If it's too thin there it will, will not uh, guide the wheel properly when it goes through. So now maybe I have one millimeter on that side. I go even closer, rotate and check that it doesn't touch and then I lock this one here. I usually choose to cut towards the uh, smallest cross section uh, if possible so I just did that too. So I tighten that one so this one does not move and uh, I'm 
pretty ha happy with that setting, so I close the hood. And we will now look a little bit at the display also. Here. Uh, the X position now is, is said to be at 25.335 millimeters. I will reset that because this will be my zero. So to do that, I use arrows going down to reset and I press enter. It asks me if I yes or no and I think yes is what I want to do. So I press it again and it resets this to zero. So now when we make our first cut here, uh, uh, we are at zero position, so next time when we make a cut we can choose how thin or thick sample we want to have and we can do it with a precision of about one thousand of a millimeter. So I press green and start. So now I can hear that the cut has finished, so I stop here the red button and then I have to wait for the click that comes here before I can open the hood. And I have now cut fairly thin sample and you can if you like now when you have this first cut made you can move the table back <coughs> so it leaves the cutting wheel, you can open up this knob here and looking at the display and uh, at the same time uh, screwing on this knob here, you can cut a very very thin sample. So if you know the thickness of the cutting wheel which is 0.8 millimeter, you feed 0.8 millimeter first for the cutting wheel and then I would say that you could probably cut a half a millimeter thin sample. So that if you add 0.8 and 0.5, it will, will be 1.3 millimeter feed. And the feed can be made with 1,000 of a millimeter precision. Like that. And then lock the screw on top of the precision wise here. Again. So if I would do the next cut now, it would be roughly a half a millimeter slice, which is a fairly thin sample to cut. And you could go on to cut several of, the, of them if you like. Uh, now the only thing that remains is, is cleaning here. And during the cutting, I noticed that the hood was not very clean on the inside, so I wiped that off first. like that. One thing that is very handy when you clean this is that you can take this hose off and start the uh, water flushing. It goes on automatically when you cut but you can start it only the water cooling there and use this hose to flush the machine inside. The wise sample holder, everything like that. And once that is done, it's time to remove things. Take the sample holder and the sample at the same time. Like that. Put it on the paper there to rinse away some water. The precision wise two screws there, the electrical connector,
I put, remember to put this cap on, as I said before, it's very important, otherwise we will ruin the connector by having water into it. The cutting wheel. Now, the machine itself needs to be wiped off also. Actually put the cutting wheel away. And after the machine has been cleaned, you put uh, wipe off water from all the, the precision wise, uh, sample holders, whatever you've been using, put it back into the drawers and leave it looking as it will do in only five seconds. So, when you're finished with cleaning, the machine should be clean, both the interior and exterior of the, of the machine. The table surface should be clean. The wall behind, in case uh, uh, it's been some splashes coming on the wall there. The order in the drawers should be as it was when you came here. And uh, actually, there is one thing I have forgot to show you. Uh, I will show you that it exists, but uh, I won't show you how to use it. You can always come back to me and ask questions about that one, or if anything is unclear on the instruction film, you can always come back. As a matter of fact, I want you to come back and ask instead of try. So, short break. So, this one here, uh, with this table here, you can, instead of the hood back here, you can remove that, you can put this one on uh, and you can cut your samples manually especially if you have for instance a polymer sheet material polymer composite it's easy to cut here uh, it might splash a little bit so uh, you need to to wear protective clothing for it but uh, uh, it's it works very nice uh, one thing i would like to tell you uh, in advance is that when you have put this one into the machine like that it's very heavy, so make sure that this pin is always there when you have it in the upward position. Otherwise, if you get this in your forehead, it might hurt a lot. Uh, so be aware that this one exists, uh, and please come and ask me if and when you need to use it. It's uh, stored underneath the bench over there. So, good luck with your cutting, and if you have questions, remember, I'm always here. Come and ask them.